Hello everyone, today we will explore the story of anime Harim in the labyrinth of another world. Kaga Mishio, a young student, begins playing a cheap online game he believes is virtual reality. He suddenly wakes up in a barn and starts collecting items he finds along the way. After collecting the Durandal sword, he leaves the barn and finds several bandits attacking that village. Even though he sees the bandits are high levels and Kaga is only level 1. He decides to attack them, stabbing two of them in the neck and making the rest of them flee. Samara, the village chief, appears and thanks the boy for protecting the village, rewarding him with abandoned equipment and a place to rest. At that moment, Kaga attempts to log out but is unable to, and realizes the world around him is genuine and he must complete the game before he can log out. A villager attempts to steal Kaga's captured loot and is sentenced to slavery. To sell his loot, Kaga collects the bandits of bounty and travels to the city of Vale. There he collects the bounty and visits Alan, a slave trader who purchases the thief and reveals a new labyrinth has been discovered nearby. As Kaga is intrigued by the labyrinth, Alan suggests purchasing a slave. The boy is confused but amused by the idea. Alan then explains he only deals with slaves and suddenly a slave named Roxanne appears and Kaga is hypnotized by the girl's beauty. The man realizes that Kaga is interested in the girl and claims that she is a beach woman being very useful in combat, and is also a guaranteed virgin innocent girl. Kaga asks if the slave can betray his master, and Alan says no. He explains that without someone to inherit them or were promising them their freedom, a slave will follow them to the grave. Also, runaway slaves are devoted to bandits. Feeling guilty over considering it, Kaga is nonetheless dazzled by the possibility of a willing slave. But after Alan says the price is 450,000 gold and the boy says he doesn't have that money, Kaga prepares to leave and says goodbye to the girl, and Alan then says he can wait five days for him. The boy leaves the place determined to return in five days with the almost 450,000 gold needed to purchase Roxanne. Ten years later, the now older Kaga visits the village he first woke up in now with five female slaves, including Roxanne. Seeing a young boy named Mio, he gives Mio a sword called Simmer of Rage. Roxanne is curious, but Kaga only admits he knew Mio's father. In the present, Kaga has sold his loot but still needs another 70,000 before he can afford Roxanne. To earn money quickly, he decides to enter the labyrinth to lose valuables. Fearing his sword Durandal is too tempting for thieves, he hides it within his character menu and purchases a basic scimitar. Entering the labyrinth, he begins to experiment with the skills he has acquired, which include thief, explorer, and hero. After slaying monsters, he notices depleting. His magic causes depression, so he decides to avoid spell casting until he can increase his magic capacity. After his first day, he earns a pittance on loot, meaning he must defeat more dangerous monsters for more valuable loot. Accidentally falling into a monster nest, he almost dies, only kept alive by Durandal's health and magic absorption enchantments. After defeating the nest, he returns to Vale and learns the comrades of the bandits he killed are in the area. Kaga decides to hunt them for the bounty, despite the increased risk. Reasoning that bandits would want to stay hidden, Kaga visits the slums and discovers parts of the city becomes a red light district after sunset. Despite the many distractions, Kaga locates a bandit and follows him to their headquarters. As there are a large number of separate bandit gangs, Kaga observes them learn their habits. His landlord informs him bandits began murdering each other after an important boss was killed and bandits began fighting to take over his territory. The bandits Kaga had killed before this were members of a losing gang the other bandits had driven out of Vale. With less than 24 hours to purchase Roxanne, Kaga makes his move infiltrating the headquarters. Kaga is able to kill several bandits in their sleep but is forced to teleport into the labyrinth when other bandits are alerted, trading them in for the bounty. Kaga finally has enough money and purchases Roxanne from Alan. Roxanne surprises Kaga by apologizing for doubting he would be able to buy her. With the slave contract in place, Roxanne is happy to have an owner and Kaga is able to relax. Now he has succeeded in buying her. After finally being able to buy Roxanne and bring her home with him, they go to the inn and Kaga asks the receptionist for a bigger room for the two. They go upstairs and he finally finds himself alone with her. Roxanne is noticeably nervous and Kaga realizes he mistakenly got a room with a double bed compared to two single beds and is afraid the thought of sharing a bed scares her. He is able to reassure her that as well as sharing his bed, he mostly wants her to help him understand more about that world as he came from very far away and needs to learn how everything works there. Also, Kaga wants her to accompany him into the labyrinth as a fighter and Roxanne confirms he can count on her as she's a wolf kind and can help him in the fight. Being very useful in the battle, she starts unpacking and Kaga notices she's barefoot and offers him his own shoes to use until they buy new ones as any equipment there is made to fit the wearer, it fits perfectly on her. After an awkward hug, they go out to buy some protective gear for Roxanne. She assures him she can use what he already has but Kaga doesn't have a shield yet so Roxanne asks for a wooden shield. 
at the shop, and after Roxanne takes forever to choose a single item, they leave the store with all the items the girl might need. Roxanne then affirms they might need a cloak as it is good for rainy days and again the girl takes a long time to choose between two cloaks. Kaga is impatient but remembers how the girl is cute and he is happy to pass the time watching her. After finally choosing the one she wants, Kaga asks if the girl needs anything else as that day is a special day to remember. Roxanne surely asks to purchase some undergarments as she only has the one she is wearing. Excited, the boy then says she can buy a spare set. At the end of the day, they go back to the inn, still nervous. The lum voice Kaga needs to ask the girl to take a seat and after sitting on the floor, assuming the bed is just for her master. Kaga pulls her into his side and says the bed is theirs and she will sleep there too and she doesn't have to worry about that. She appreciates it as other masters ask for the slaves to sleep on the floor. Roxanne proves adept at repairing and maintaining equipment but they both grow more nervous as night approaches. She checks her new sword saying it needs some care and asks Kaga to use her old undergarments as rags for maintaining their equipment, which the boy approves. Roxanne says he can eat while she is working, but the boy suggests they eat together. The girl starts to dress in her new clothes, making Kaga excited. But as he notices Roxanne is uncomfortable, he tries not to look but can't help it. He sees that Roxanne has a furry tail and is excited to touch it later. Suddenly the receptionist brings hot water for them to bathe and Kaga tries his best to contain his joy. As he was waiting to become intimate with Roxanne for a long time, he asks the girl to scrub his back, which the girl does. After that, he does the same for Roxanne and also washes her tail and her hair. When the girl is washing Kaga's hair, the boy can't wait anymore and aware of the situation. Roxanne rushes to the closet and pulls her maid's clothes, asking if her master wants her to use it. Kaga says she doesn't have to, and after asking Roxanne to remove her undergarment, the two begin their intimate moment together through the night. The next morning, as they are getting dressed, Kaga asks her how he can add skills to his equipment. Roxanne then explains that he would have to purchase the gear that already comes with the skills equipped, and explains if the boy wants to add skills. He will need skills crystals, an item that is formed through the accumulation of monster skills, and it's found rarely in the labyrinth. Edit text to fuse the equipment and get the skills a blacksmith is required. Kaga thinks about getting a job as one, but Roxanne affirms only dwarves to this job. She further explains that hiring a blacksmith is also not recommended as it fails most of the time and they dislike direct transactions even if they found one. There's no telling if you can trust them, as some dwarfs already made fortunes by pretending the fusion process failed and selling the equipment with skills later. Roxanne finishes saying it's a different story if you become friends with a blacksmith, and upon hearing this, Kaga is determined to recruit one for their party. They leave the inn fully equipped with their gear, and upon heading to a dark alley, Kaga opens a portal that transports them directly to the first floor of the labyrinth. As they walk, Roxanne leads the way after smelling some monsters and abilities due to her being a wolf kind, she asks Kaga to lend her a magic crystal, and as the boy doesn't know what that is, she explains that monsters are made of magic power and when they are defeated, it gradually accumulates, eventually forming a magic crystal being used by guild temples as energy sources. She needs Kaga to lend her one because it's not possible to store magic power when you defeat monsters unless you have a magic crystal, making the boy disappointed as he wasn't aware of all that. Roxanne still explains that the magic crystal is probably the most valuable item that can be acquired in the labyrinth. Kaga asks how to get in and she says besides the labyrinth the empty ones can be purchased from guilds. Upon knowing all this new information, Kaga affirms they will buy some later and they head to the monster's path. The boy draws his sword and manages to eliminate the creature in one blow making Roxanne impressed with her master. After smelling the next path, they head forwards and eliminate more monsters. At the end, Kaga is grateful to Roxanne for defeating so many monsters on her own saying her power is impressive. She explains how she was a newcomer to the party she used to be part of and as nobody listened to her, she had to watch battles from a distance and learn. As she was still standing, Kaga asks her to take his seat on his side and says that from now on she doesn't need to wait to be told to sit and she should sit as close to him as possible. He asks to touch her ears and says he is enjoying himself. He mentions that it reminds him of grilled seaweed wrapped machai, something he used to eat in his homeland. Upon hearing this, Roxanne sadly asks her master if he will be returning to his homeland anytime soon. Kaga then explains he won't as he actually can't. The girl shares her worry about him leaving as the people sell the slaves they no longer need and the Kaga assures her he plans on keeping her forever. He still comments that he wants to recruit more members to their party to become more strengthful in his thoughts. Kaga understands that Roxanne is consenting to Harem. They had to buy a magic crystal and Kaga asks the receptionist for two. She asks if it's possible to be black magic crystals and the boy buys them showing his purchase to Roxanne. She explains the magic crystal's color changes depending on the magic power stored inside it. They turn red after defeating 10 monsters and purple after defeating 100. 
Kaga asks if there's a limit and she responds that after defeating 1 million monsters they turn white but stop at the green which is 10,000. It's typical for them to sell after turning blue after defeating 1,000 monsters. Kaga suggests they head back to the labyrinth and they go after he easily eliminates the monsters. Roxanne comments how the first floor creatures don't stand a chance against him and ask for them to head to a higher floor, as the boy thought it was going down. Roxanne explains the labyrinth goes upwards as it is a living creature that lures people to them, uses monsters to defeat them, and feeds on their bodies. To defeat the labyrinth it's necessary to kill the boss on the highest level considering to fight this battle. Kaga asks if there are any spells to attack all targets as he wants to acquire a way to attack multiple monsters at once, but the girl responds she doesn't know much about them. Thinking to himself, Kaga realizes that in order to become a mage as he wishes, he should try casting spells. But when he tries to use them on a monster, nothing happens, making him think he doesn't have enough MP to cast them. Looking at the magic crystal, the boy notices it's now red as he already killed 10 monsters. As Kaga has a crystallization upgrade as a bonus skill, the magic crystal quickly becomes purple after he only defeated 32 monsters. Wanting to increase their healing abilities, Kaga asks her to fight along with her bare hands. And as Kaga struggles to do so, Roxanne manages to eliminate them with ease. A few monsters later, Kaga manages to heal himself with his new skill and sets Roxanne a new job as a monk, making the girl excited. Back in their room, they repeat their moment from the night before, washing each other and being intimate. The next day, they head to the labyrinth again, this time determined to eliminate the final boss and that's the end of the video. Peace.